Hi, this is Sarah Marks, one of the librarians here at UMass Lowell. Today, we're going to look at four articles so that you can see the elements of peer-reviewed and scholarly articles in different subject areas. This is designed to help you understand what you're looking for when looking at articles to make sure you're getting the right article. What does it mean for an article to be peer-reviewed? It means that an expert not only writes the articles, but it's submitted to this magazine or journal where other experts in the field will review it to make sure it's accurate. Do things slip through the cracks? Yeah, but science especially and perspectives of the world change. So sometimes older articles don't remain current and valid, but this is the best system we have for ensuring that quality research is done to come to conclusions. But when you're looking at an article, what should you be looking for? Here we have a journal article from the Computational Intelligence and Neuroscience Journal. I know that because it's up here. It tells me the volume, the article ID, how many pages, and this DOI number. This is a unique URL for this article. Anytime you search or type in that URL into your web browser, this article is going to come back. What else do I see? It says here, research article. In the sciences and health especially, there are different types of research that's being done. Original research, systematic reviews, they're going to start identifying what's being done. So this is a research article. I'm also seeing the author. And this little symbol right here is called their ORCID ID. It's their unique identifier so that you can find all the articles they've written. You can see, and this is something that is very unique to scholarly articles, where they're from and how to contact them. This article, especially in the sciences, they'll tell you how this went time-wise. They got this in June 2022, and it was published in September of 2022. And here's who edited it. They tell you their copyright, and this is going into the Creative Commons attribution, which means it's an open access article. All of this information is to help you not just identify who this person is as an expert, but also to show you as transparently as possible how this happened. Notice this took three months to publish. That's from the moment it was submitted, not from the moment the author got the idea. This is years of research for this author. So these are time intensive opportunities for them. And that's because they're going through this far more intensive review then a newspaper article or a magazine article will go. Journal peer-reviewed articles tend to give you an introduction. This gives you the lay of the land. What's going on? Why were they interested in this research? This one is providing some color images. Related work is very similar to the work you do when you write a research paper. This is where they start looking at the other literature to figure out what's been going on what's already happened, and what they might be building on. Again, you can see some images. And then they start getting into their research. You'll see graphs and charts, things laying out, mock-ups. And then they'll go to their conclusions. They address their conflict of interests if they have them. And then, just like you in a research paper, they list their references. These are the articles they read, especially in that section where they talked about the work that had already been done. You can go and find these articles. And this is 29 sources for a seven-page article. Think of how many your professor's asking you to do for the length of your paper. Is it comparable? Probably not. Let's look at another article. This is from the Journal of Analytical Psychology, and it's about Carl Jung and Stephen King. So how do we know? Here we go. Right at the top, like the other article, it's showing us 
the name of the journal, the publication, the pages. It's talking about who the author is and where you can find them. It's giving you an abstract. I highly encourage you to use this abstract before you start reading the entire article. This one's 17 pages. Do you wanna read 17 pages if the article isn't right? But, and this is a big but, this is not part of the article. You cannot quote from here. You need to keep reading and get into the article itself, which starts right below this line. Now, this is a psychology article and not a hard science. So they're going to do something a little different. And it's probably a little more akin to a look at literature. And literature doesn't provide as much structure as those scholarly articles and sciences do. But if we keep scrolling, you'll see there are multiple headings, quotes, footnotes. Footnotes are not something we get in every article. Some uh, publishers like to use them, others don't. And of course, at the end of the article, we have our references. Now, these aren't numbered, but you can see there are quite a few here from this author. And then we have the translation of the abstract and a second language for the article, which is probably Italian uh, and a couple other languages so that other people can understand it from other countries. Now, this looks a little different, but it has similar elements. This one is called Ages of Organization, the Emergence of National Interest Groups in American History. This doesn't give all that information that we saw from the other ones, like what journal this is in, what the author's background is, but it does have some things lower. Here we go. Here's who our professor is. Sometimes these things don't end up on the top of the article, but they are here for you to look at. Notice this says political science is quarterly. One really important thing we suggest you do is look at the topic of the article and the topic of the journal. So this is about American history and the emergence of national interest groups. Does this seem like it fits in a journal about political science? I'd say yes. Let's keep going with this article. You can see this, like the article about Stephen King, doesn't have a lot of things beyond words, and it does have footnotes. Here's a figure that we can look at and a chart, but it's very text heavy. This is a social science article, so it's a lot of data that's a little different than the Carl Jung article and Stephen King article. And again, when we get to the bottom of a 27-page article, we have our copyright statements, and that's it. Where are our citations? Our citations were all in the footnotes. You can see right here, here's a citation to something that was used on this page. One more article. And again, let's think in terms of, does this journal match the article's title for subjects? So this is the Journal of Adolescent Health. And this article is called Child and Adolescent Mental Health During the COVID-19 Pandemic. So this is really current. Now this is the journal our, the journal's web page from Science Direct, one of our databases. You can see here things are linked. This is a lot of authors. When you see a lot of authors like this, this person right here, number one, they did the work, especially if it's not in alphabetical order. They did the most work, they probably did the least work. If they have a PhD, they're probably a mentor or a supporter, someone who was instrumental in helping this happen, but not necessarily doing a lot of work. But this person without the PhD and this person, they might've been undergraduate or graduate students who are helping. Now, if you wanted to see this PDF, we can download it and you can see what this article looks like. And again, we're dealing with a science article. Uh, so you see all the associations and affiliations of these art of these authors. We see that this is an original article. We see the abstract. Now this is a health one. So they're breaking down the purpose, the methods, the re results and the discussion in 
natural language so you understand a little bit better before you read the rest of the article. You can see here's that conflict of interest statement that we saw on the first one. Their methods are here, charts, graphs, and more. There's not a lot of photography in these. There were some images in the first one, but this is not about drawing you in. This is about providing information. And then of course, they're providing links to their supplementary data and where they got funding from. This goes hand in hand with that conflict of interest statement. Knowing who funded the research does impact how we evaluate the information. Can we rely on this organization to fund a, not, a, a research that is not biased in their favor? And of course, all their references. And notice we went from text, gra text icon to grabby icon. These are all links when we're looking at them online. So you can go get those articles as well. I hope this video helps you understand the various elements of these scholarly articles so that you can identify them when you're doing research for yourself. If you need more help, the UMass Lowell Research and Learning Team is here to help you. If you go to the library webpage and click Ask a Librarian, you can contact a librarian for one on one help with your research topic and finding articles. And if you're stuck and not able to find what you need or scholarly articles about what you need, we'll help you do that too.